uh, pl please go on. Yeah. Okay. N Nabi will help you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll be sharing the screen. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for having me here and thank you Sako and other team members and community members who are uh, like helping in organizing this uh, summit today. So uh, uh, today I'll be speaking about the building open source developer tool. Okay, so uh, my, uh, first of all, I'd like to like introduce myself. My name is Tokir Nasir and I'm from Pakistan and currently I'm in UA and I'm working in the tradelink.com. So at the tradelink.com, uh, we are building a B2B e-commerce platform for the MENA region. And I've done my like a BSCS and like uh, computer science degree from the GC University Faisalabad. So this is a pretty much about me. So what is the agenda of this uh, like talk? So uh, first of all, I would like to explain uh, a few of the questions like why should you contribute? I'll try to motivate you. And then where and how you can start the very first step that is needed uh, to be into the open source community. And then I'll talk about a dev tool that I'm working on for like quite a few weeks. And I'll also share some uh, future plan for the dev tool. And I will also explain how you can contribute to this if you are willing to, and then we'll have a, a question and answer session. So first of all, why should you co contribute to the open source? So it helps you in many ways. So first of all, it helps you in improving your personal skills, your coding skills, your contribution skills, your like uh, the skills that need you to be the best among the other community members. So how does it uh, help you in, in, in improving your coding skill is when you contribute to uh, a, uh, a project, you create a PR or you uh, review a PR, it helps you learn so many things. Because if you want to like increase or the quality of your code, you need to be uh, writing more like code. You need to practice it. And, uh, it, and if you want to uh, like have uh, uh, the best quality, you need to like increase the quantity of the code you write in uh, like uh, your day time, on, on your daily routine or in your weekly routines. It also helps you in learning, uh, in gaining the experience uh, like uh, as El Shad exp explained that uh, for the students and the, for the new joiners, uh, when you apply for the internships, what you need to have is uh, some early experience because uh, companies prefer those who have a, a bit of early experience in the field uh, they, they because they, they will not have to like uh, start from the scratch for that uh, particular uh, intern who is getting started with the team. So, it also helps you in increasing the community and peer recognition, which helps you in building the, the network with the best uh, like uh, developers or the, the, the people who are out there building great stuff. It also helps you in like uh, lending the great uh, uh, and the better jobs for you. Like it helps you in building the great community. And once you are into the community, that community can reach you and offer you uh, a better job. Mm -hmm. It also helps you improve uh, like uh, this so uh, software as a user and as a business level. Like when uh, you're working uh, in a uh, in a software company and you want to like uh, improve the way a software is developed, and you want to learn the business uh, side of that, and it will help you like learn uh, in in a very easy way. So, uh, what is the very first step? that you need to take in order to like to contribute into an open source. So the first step is always very difficult because you, you are empty minded. You do not know where to start, how to start that. So always start from the something that is very small in the beginning. Like you can go to uh, any uh, pro uh, like project, uh, open source project on the GitHub. And what you can do is you can read the documentation just to learn what it is. And if you find that the documentation has any kind of like typos or any uh, small errors, or maybe it's missing some example or something like that, you can just create a PR for that. And uh, it, will ha it will help you to like uh, uh, be more passionate about uh, like contributing to the open source uh, projects. And uh, what you can do is also you can find and fix these small uh, issues that are being reported by some other people or maybe it's something that you find. So uh, 
there is uh, a way that uh, allows you to like uh, go and start coding and fix the small issues that are very easy to pick. So I'll demonstrate that for, uh, let me go to, so there is a website that is goodfirstissue.dev which uh, lists all the uh, open source projects from the GitHub. So what it does, it, it lists some of the issues that uh, are labeled as good first issues. So when uh, we go to, uh, like we, we, we click on this, uh, anyways, you can like go and uh, select the language of your choice, just to uh, like, if you are a JavaScript developer, then you can just go and uh, click on this uh, label and it will like uh, load all the projects that are being developed in JavaScript. So then you have this tab here, which is like, uh, it has 10 issues. When you click on this, it will list all the, all those issues that are labeled as good first issues. So what are the good first issues? They are easy to pick for the beginners. Okay. So when you go there, you can just read this. And uh, after reading this, you can understand and um, you may try to like solve this on your own and it will help you to contribute to, uh, and it will help you to contribute to this project to solve this particular issue. So this is something that was like missing uh, in the El Shad uh, uh, session. Like it, uh, I, I, I thought I should like uh, explain this a bit so that you know where you need, you, uh, where you can go and start that. So uh, I hope this will help so many uh, newcomers, new joiners to like uh, contribute into the open source. So you can also, uh, uh, the contribution is not only writing code or like improving the documentation or stuff like that. Even if you have a feature request or even if you have a feedback about the project or the open source project, you can just go and like create an issue and just provide your feedback. So what it does, it helps uh, the open source maintainers to uh, uh, learn about the uh, like how the end user thinks about our product and either they are doing the right thing or not. So it helps them improve the experience of that uh, particular software or like whatever it is. And also, uh, what, what you can do if you like if you are not technical guy okay, and you have some kind of idea that can like help uh, building an open source uh, uh, software or if. Uh, it, it can help us like uh, or any open source um, uh, project to add new features. You can just go and just explain your ideas uh, ideas on the and uh, to the developers who are maintaining that and it will help them like uh, uh, learning more about uh, what the, uh, what you want and then they can think about it and they can like implement that idea if they think it's worth uh, giving a shot. So for everybody who is here and new, you can join us, the co-op community, and which is like very like helpful. I met Sago in the last session with the Kamran Ahmed, the roadmap guy, if you don't know. So, uh, and then uh, we just had a like quick call after the session and uh, I was really excited to be the part of this uh, co-op community. And then Sago invited me to like, uh, Let's uh, let to the uh, let give a talk on the dev tool you are working on. So if you if you think that uh, you you have the passion to be uh, to to be one of us to be one of the open source uh, like uh, uh, community member, you can just join us. And if you if you think that you need uh, you need any kind of help, if you have any idea you want to like, share with us and you want some help in that, we can like uh, help you in any in, in any way so that you. Uh, follow the right path. So now, uh, I just want to one point mention. Thank you, Malik, for joining the Go team. It's really the question first time he asked it. Like, was there was five points, and then he came his point for five point answers, and then asked me, Sako or community, do you have anything more? I said, man, in past year, I never have seen single question like asking that and i want people like you just join us and maintain contribute and be member thank you so much being for us amazing money it's an honor, it's an honor for me thank you so much so okay so um i've been working on a dev tool uh, uh which i think can improve the uh, developer experience for the backend engineers so uh 
let's have a look at this. Uh, and I call it TSST, which is the Swagger Schema Generator. So it actually helps you to write the very short and concise and easy to understand syntax and which can be transformed into uh, the open, space, uh, open API specifications, uh, definitions, and uh, or if either in a JSON format or in a YAML uh, format, whatever you need. So uh, why uh, I started like working on TSSG is uh, we deal a lot with this swagger at our work. So we, we need to like, uh, whenever we uh, write, uh, started working on any API, we just document that in the, uh, TA, uh, like in the Swagger uh, specification so that uh, we could like, uh, so let me explain a bit, how do we do that in our current company? So let's say if I'm going to like create an API. So first of all, we just think of how it's going to like uh, accept the uh, user data and then it responds to that. So we write the Swagger definition for that. And for, uh, from the Swagger definition, we, we uh, generate the typings. And once we have the typings, we just go into the code and we write the API and it helps us like uh, to write the more uh, predictable code and it also helps us in uh, a good uh, and restrictive type hinting so that we don't miss anything and produce uncertain results that we are not expecting. So once uh, that's done, we generate the SDK out of the Swagger definition. And then once we have the SDK, we use that in our front end applications and use that and it works uh, very like, easy. So at the very first part, we, we, we deal with the Swagger manually. We need to write the Swagger file. Uh, like if, if, if I want to in, uh, write a component schema. Uh, so uh, what we, we do that, like we go to the Swagger file and believe me, our one module have like more than 10,000 line of uh, like Swagger definition file. So uh, just imagine if you, if you deal with uh, such kind of uh, big file, which has a lot of lines, a lot of blogs, uh, blocks in that and you just need to like add uh, one more uh, like say part definition okay so like uh, so what, what you need to do is you need to uh, copy and paste that and you need to be very careful like either you are uh, whatever you are writing and you you uh, most of the time what you do is you repeat yourself so uh, let me uh, tell you how uh, the Swagger does that. Basically, if anyone who, uh, who doesn't know about Swagger, it is an API development tool uh, for the backend engineers or for the companies, you can say. So what it does, it, it, it provides you a specification which is called the Open API specification. And, and uh, it, they have a set of rules to define the structure of the file, which helps you to uh, generate the uh, SDKs, generate the typings, generate the documentation of your APIs uh, for, uh, for your, uh, like, uh, your uh, like clients or for your own uh, in, uh, like private, uh, uh, it, you can say it, a private SDKs for your own uh, use. So uh, they provide you uh, many uh, like tools like Swagger Editor, Swagger UI and CodeGen to like create these tubs and client libraries for that. Uh, but uh, there, is, uh, no, and, and there is no easy way and, uh, which allows you to write and extend the, or maybe uh, uh, to split your schemas, your paths, of course, into separate files so that you can maintain that easily. So uh, then uh, I started looking for uh, the tools which may help us do that thing, like to write less and get more out of that. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything uh, useful. Uh, one uh, project that was uh, that I found on the GitHub was Tiny Spec, but uh, that was similar to this uh, what we do in the Swagger. But uh, it offers a new specification, which was not like uh, something that I was interested in. So then I thought I should like if I, I can't find anything, I should start like working uh, on my own tool, which will help me. Uh, at first, I started it from myself because it was my problem and I was facing that problem. So I thought uh, I can like uh, work on a quick tool, which, which is going to be a like tool, uh, which will help me, which will ask me some questions and I will just answer them and it will add that uh, uh, schema or path or whatever it is to the Swagger automatically. Then I thought if me as a backend developer is having or facing uh, this kind of uh, like, uh, 
issue. Maybe there are some other people uh, out there in the world are, who are like working or and dealing with this tiger are facing some uh, this similar uh, problem, like writing uh, all the uh, all the uh, swagger definitions manually, and th there is no uh, like you can say uh, easy or easy way where they can maintain and manage their uh, files. So uh, then, uh, out of the curiosity, I built something like this, which is uh, a very uh, simple uh, interface which provides you with the left editor and then there is a right for the preview and if you just write the syntax here. So uh, I'll go back to slides because I'm, I may miss something. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. I'll maximize it. So this is how the SSD syntax looks like. Like you just pass the uh, object and then you know the name and email and age and address and the, you just mention the types and then it transforms that to this syntax on the right. So just look at this, like you just wrote six or ten, uh, like seven lines of code and you have uh, already got like 20 lines of code out of it. And you don't need to repeat yourself like writing all these types, types and opening and closing brackets and all those stuff which, which really uh, is cumbersome and it's a time wasting task. Like you are repeating yourself over and over again. So uh, back to the demo, which is uh, I'm calling TSSE editor. Here, let, let, uh, this current POC is only uh, like allowing you to work with the object schemas as of now. You cannot like create a fully qualified path or uh, like definition, endpoint definition here, but it will only help you to generate the object schema as of now. But uh, once uh, we are, because it's alpha version, in the next version, we'll have a way to write the fully qualified uh, schemas, request bodies, parameters, and the paths. Uh, so uh, let, let's say uh, you have an object that is uh, like a user object. So you have a name property like in that and you want it to be a string. Okay, so this name property of type string looks like this in a uh, like swagger definition. Okay, so uh, then you have, you say uh, we have like, uh, we want uh, a user can have an age property of type number you just type that and it can have an address and that address can have a city of type string and then a country of type string. So look, this is what it produced. You can just go and simply copy that and paste uh, to your file manually. So uh, if you want to uh, like uh, mark this name property as required uh, what I proposed was is to put the exclamation mark here and it will automatically add that to the required properties. So you don't have to like repeat yourself like telling explicitly uh, to, uh, and writing that uh, in the array that the name property is required. And if similarly if you want this whole object to be required just go and put the mark and it will add that to and it will add that uh, to a required field. So it will enforce that uh, you will have that uh, address field whenever the schema is returned. So if similarly, you can just go and also if you want that country field to be required within that, so you, you can just do that and it automatically add that. So it is like uh, you can like nest uh, as many uh, objects into it and it will work out of the box and you don't need to worry about like where and how uh, the, the block is ending and where do I, you, do, uh, where you need to put that. So I have also added some examples so that uh, it is easier for the person who visits this and uh, is going to, like uh, wants to try that tool. So what you can do is uh, you can just go in a simple schema and this is a very simple schema of a user. So look, uh, you just wrote eight lines and you got, I don't know what, how many lines are these. So uh, this is what uh, I try to solve myself and uh, believe me, me and some of the uh, colleagues uh, at my office are using this tool and we are like saving at least like five minutes. Uh, we deal with this uh, swagger uh, object schemas. So uh, even if th these are the five minutes, uh, then uh, if uh, just imagine if you 
like uh, deal with the swagger file a lot in, in, a, in a day. So it will, it will save you a lot of time in that case. Okay. So we also added some uh, guide, uh, which is uh, like a walkthrough and uh, like a tutorial, like how things are and how you can use them. So there are some like uh, examples for the mix or array data types. So look at this, you can have the array of objects. Like if, if this was the schema of uh, like a user, so you can have an array of users like this. You put an array and you pass an object and then you just write the values and look, this 13th line of code produced this much of like output. And you just need to just copy that and paste it to your like file and it, it, it will like save you a time. And I hope uh, uh, you, you wanna try this tool uh, at your convenience. So uh, let's get back to the slides. We have some future plans for this TSSG. So uh, the POC that I showed you is the online editor that is on the left okay, here. So this online editor will help you uh, to generate the uh, definitions without you installing the TSSG into your projects. Okay, because we are going to have a version where uh, uh, we are going to have a complete CLI and a project editor, which will allow you to install the uh, TSSG into your projects, which, and which will allow you to deal with the swagger uh, through this TSSG syntax, and it will help you to code split your uh, uh, schemas and paths and request bodies, and, or maybe if you want to like modulize it uh, in uh, like a way where you you want to have a module for the only users. So you will have only the users schemas and point of stuff like that in the definition. And uh, once it's done, it will automatically generate the swagger schema out of it. And you can then use that and it will help you to like manage your, uh, all the schema definitions uh, without worrying about like to dealing with that thousand slides of code of a swagger JSON. So uh, I hope there are some uh, chats uh, going on. Let me see if I have any question. Just I was too quick. Um, I think Evan has a question. But if yes, please. Okay, uh, so it's like uh, SSG is fully compatible with OS 3.0. Yes, uh, we are just trying it. Uh, yeah, this, is just, so. this was just a POC. So. Uh, the TSSG will be uh, like offering all the yeah, sure. uh, compatibility with the 3.0 uh, OS 3. Excuse me. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we hear you. Yeah, okay, cool. So there is a question, what about YAML support? Yes, uh, we will uh, be adding the YAML support like uh, in a few weeks. Uh, we are working on that. But uh, before that, we are working on the next version of the syntax that uh, I'll cover in the slides. So just bear with me and I'll, I'll explain each and everything. Okay, so I'll just move forward. The, uh, this is how the TSSG CLI is going to look like and uh, which is going to help you deal with uh, the swagger without even touching the swagger file. So uh, you can just see it, uh, this uh, syntax TSSG gen schema v1 user. So let's say if you want to like generate a schema of a user of a version one. So uh, if, if you do it manually, like you're going to the swagger file, you just go to the swagger file, you just, uh, uh, add that manually. Uh, like you need to be explicit about all the things. But here, uh, when you will uh, type the TSSG gen schema v1 user, it will open the editor for you, the built-in editor that you have set for your ed uh, like uh, CLI editor. Either you can set the micro or you can set the whim or anything that you like at your convenience and uh, you, uh, you love to work with. So I personally uh, use whim. So this will open the whim for me. Okay, so uh, then you can just go and write the TSSG syntax and you just hit the save and you just exit the file and it, it will automatically save that schema to your Swagger JSON file. And if you wanna edit that, it will 
just pull the existing v1 user into the editor it will show you the schema and then you just make changes and it will uh, uh, replace that v1 user schema if you, if you want to edit that similarly if you want to generate the paths you will be able to generate the paths like this like if you want to generate a get user path which is like uh, maybe it can be get user by id so you just uh, enter this and it will like ask you some questions or uh, it will open the editor for you and you can just provide this uh, uh, the uh, tssg syntax and it will save that for you so the next version of syntax uh, is going to be uh, looking like something like this so you will have a schema block and request body block and inside that you can put your schemas and even you you will be able to like extend the existing schemas like look if you if we have the v1 user schema which has the name and age and then you want uh, a v1 employee which extends the v1 user and you you want those two properties of the user inside this v1 employee and you want to have the uh, two more properties salary and department for that employee you can just use that and it will automatically uh, like uh, transform that to uh, swagger uh, uh, without like you write, writing or repeating yourself so this is how uh, the request body is going to look like you will have a request bodies log where you can have like these uh, request bodies and it will uh, allow you to like uh, write in a very descriptive way and it's, it's something that is uh, similar to the typescript typings so uh, like uh, uh, I actually took the idea from uh, a bit of GraphQL and TypeScript and merged both so that it is familiar for uh, other people and it is easy to understand. So all, all, all this syntax is, uh, is for like you, you just need to write less and it's very easy for you to uh, uh, like guess what this uh, all a schema about. Like uh, imagine if you go and you look at this kind of file. Okay. So which has this v1 get user schema, okay? Uh, sorry, path definition. So uh, understanding this takes you kind of time. Like uh, you just gonna look at this and you can like, maybe you will uh, read it and like spend some time to like learn what does it actually do. So in this case, it is going to look like this for the paths you will have a definition for the path like v1 get user and then you will have the uh, this is like the a draft proposal i'm working on it and it's still in process so you you just pass the tag here so the global tag like uh, what this uh, and you, uh, the the endpoint belongs to so then you just pass this uh, new block which is like a post which is a the type of the request or method of the request and you just pass a description you just uh, refer to the existing i'm sorry you are, you're just uh, uh, refer to the existing uh, schemas like this, like at request bodies dot v1 get user and it will automatically uh, uh, fill that uh, for you. Or if, if you don't want to fill that, you want to mention that like with the shop, that's the way uh, it is done like this in the schemas, you have a ref, uh, I don't have any example, but excuse me. So this is how it is going to like uh, help you to narrow down all the things. And this is how it is going to like allow you to add the responses like of type 200, 400, and uh, you just need to write very less and it will give you a fully qualified open API spec uh, definition. So this is uh, like a very uh, initial draft, which I am working on and I really need uh, help from the community, like people like you who are using Swagger in daily life. And uh, if you are like willing to uh, contribute to this uh, so that I could make this syntax as easy as possible so that it is adoptable by uh, the community and the other developers. Uh, so it, it will be a great help for me because this is the most difficult part uh, among all these like editor CLI stuff because this is something that has all the uh, like you can say it's, it's the base for this whole TSSG. So I really want you uh, like help in uh, further like uh, making this uh, syntax better. So that's why I, I, I showed uh, for this talk and I, I thought it would be a great so that I could like share uh, whatever I have as of now so that I could get some contribution for some of the great people like you so that I could uh, uh, make it 
more better, make it more easy for people to adopt it and uh, uh, so that uh, everyone uses it at their convenience. So I think we have some more questions. And any reason why TSSG should not be the next official specification? Ah, uh, well, I, I don't have uh, very like a, a good answer for this as of now, but I'm really uh, working very hard on this and I'm working on the uh, parser right now, which parses the syntax and generates the ASD. And uh, once we have the ASD, we can do whatever we want. So uh, all we, uh, all I want is to like have a better way to write the JSON files. Like I, I personally, uh, hate like writing json files because we you need to be more explicit and you you, you can't have even comments in there you can't have uh, an extra comma even so this is very restrictive for like uh, a people a lazy people like me so i really hate like working manually with the json files so that's why i try to like work on my own tool so that i could uh, increase my own productivity so then once i thought it's something that I'm facing, maybe there are people out there who are uh, facing the same challenge. So I thought to make it uh, open source so that we, I could get some contributions as well. And we make it the next, uh, to, 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 to like, we, I, I can like make it the next uh, uh, like open API spec, maybe a, a, a tool that is like, uh, that is officially works with like specification for the Swagger. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. Uh, let's see how it goes. So putting the link. Okay. So how you can contribute. So before uh, you just, uh, I just tell you how you can contribute. I'll just, I uh, would like to take a deeper dive so that I explain you how is everything is being done under the hood so that you understand better so under the hood, this is the base which allows like all these three upper modules to like work. So there are two things. One is the parser and one is the transform. Okay, so the parser, it was, uh, it, uh, it allows you to pass the TSH syntax and create the uh, abstract syntax tree, okay? So once you have the abstract syntax tree, you can just traverse that, you can write the transformer that for anything, like you have a structured data, which, which is more meaningful than the uh, raw uh, TSSG syntax, then you can just generate any uh, output out of it. So this is basically a two stage process. So in the first stage, what happens is you pass the input, which is the TSSG syntax to the parser, which is a TSSG parser. What it does, it analyzes, the syntax and generates the ASD. And for those who don't, who don't know what the ASD is, it is abstract syntax tree, which is uh, a very uh, like meaningful and structured data for the, uh, which compliance with the, like, uh, uh, the set of rules that you have defined in the parser. So it, you have like uh, a tree with nodes and leaves. So once you have that tree, you have a structured data, a meaningful data. So what you can do is you can just traverse that data. In the second stage, you pass that to a transformer and that transformer just transforms to the open API specification. Okay, so more, let's uh, deep, uh, like dive deeper. So the, the, the Amin asked a question about uh, is there any lexical analysis stage in TSSG? Okay. Uh, I'll get there. I'll get there in this uh, slide, particular slide. Okay. Just a minute. I mean, I'll, I'll cover that. Okay. So the parser, uh, I had like so many choices where I could like go with the regular expressions. Either I could have gone with the uh, CFG, which is called the context-free grammar, or uh, there was a one more option, which is PEG, which is also called parsing expression grammar. So I had to make a decision for that, like, oh, which is going to suit me better for this kind of syntax and this kind of project. So uh, I spent a lot of time uh, figuring out and like experimenting with the regular expression, then the CFG and then PEG. And the 
Peg uh, won my heart in that case. So uh, I'll explain why regular expressions and CFG uh, is not the good thing for this kind of parser. Regular expressions are very like limited uh, to what they can. Like it offers you less uh, abilities than the CFG and PEG because they do not uh, allow you to backtrack. They do not know what is behind like the, the token that was behind you, it only allows you to look ahead, but it doesn't allow you to look behind. So maybe in the future, uh, in future version of JavaScript, we'll be having the look behinds as well, which will allow the library expressions to like pass the complex structures. But for that particular reason, I like couldn't agree with the like uh, the decision. I couldn't make a decision to go with the regular expression, and it was very difficult for like us to like pass that line by line and then generate uh, to generate the uh, ASP for that. So then comes the CFG, which is uh, context-free grammar. So context-free grammar uh, is uh, is very like uh, vast and very. Uh, very flexible in that case like it allows you to almost achieve any uh, like achieve any kind of uh, syntax parsing uh, but uh, when uh, actually both the peg and the cfg are, are doing the same thing but this cfg is not the like the most predictable it is unpredictable because in cfg you can have uh, one parts uh, like successful parsing like for two kind like two parts for one kind of syntax like you can have two trees, like two subtrees of one syntax. So in the pack, which is uh, more predictable, and what it does, it uh, it just takes the first input or the first successful pass result, and it just returns that as a node. So that decision, uh, like uh, it was very like uh, tempting and uh, ambiguous uh, for me to like go with the CFG because it 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 was uh, like. Uh, uh, putting uh, so many roadblocks for me because uh, I was also new into the CFG and uh, all these uh, things. But uh, then when I tried the PEG and the PEG was more uh, like uh, uh, good uh, and easy uh, to use for me. So what I did, I just created a simple parcel out of it and I, I just started playing with it. But uh, for the POC, uh, I didn't have any time. I wanted to like, uh, have a proof of concept either my idea is going to work so what i did is my uh, i just used the ast of javascript so because i uh, the only uh, part that i was having trouble with the object schemas so what i did i, I used the es prima and i just generated the uh, ast out of that and then I used that and I wrote I written a transformer and that transformer helped me to uh, uh, like generate the open api spec Okay, so, but now I have started working on the PEG and this initial version is capable of like, uh, I don't have like a time or uh, a proper like setup for the demo. So I, I may be doing that kind of sessions in near future with some of my colleagues who are helping me in, in this project. And maybe someone who uh, from now on is willing to like participate or into contribute into this project, I'll be like uh, very, uh, happy to like have you in that session so that I could explain how these things works at the lower level. So uh, now uh, the reason I switched from like JavaScript AST parser uh, to the, my own, uh, like from the scratch is because the JavaScript AST is very limited for me to uh, like propose the new syntax because it doesn't have a block uh, kind of syntax into it. It only supports the object and we, we can only pass the object syntax. If we, if we try to pass the, let, let me like uh, quickly show you as well. There is a website which is astexplorer.net, uh, which, which helps you uh, with let's a is equal to 10. So what it does is it allows you to like uh, look at this AST and you can like uh, make decisions on uh, like the values of these nodes. So look at this, we have a variable declaration and this program generated this AST. So this AST 
like it starts from this which is a program which has a body and the body is going to have multiple uh, kind of declarations either it's a if statement or a switch statement or whatever it is uh, uh, that uh, javascript supports so then uh, it starts with the variable declaration and then you have the declarations and there is a declarator which is the identifier a which has the initial value that is the literal and which is the 10 value. So what you do is you can like uh, uh, build this kind of ASTs and these ASTs, you can just see it starts from one node and it goes like, it, it, they're nested into it. So what you can do is you can just write a simple reducer for them and that reducer is going to like help you recursively uh, use the same reducer and make like um, use of small processors that process the very specific node, like a variable node or for uh, a, a function call node, and then they generate the specific output of your need. So uh, this ASD can be transformed into any other format of your choice. Like it can be transformed into a simple JSON. It can be transformed into an open API spec. It can be transformed into even a mongoose model for you so that it is like very helpful for you to generate the mongoose model out of the syntaxes that you write and you just don't need to repeat yourself. But currently at our company, what we do is we write the swagger schema separately, then we generate the typings and we, then we write the mongoose uh, because we're using MongoDB. So we, are, we write the mongoose model ourselves. So this is what uh, like I'm trying to solve, like don't repeat yourself. If you have written something that's already been written, then why do you want to repeat yourself again and again and waste time over that? So th uh, I have that plan that once we are done with this basic uh, workflow, I'll be having like a more transformer, which will allow you to transform to other uh, like ODM and ORMs as well, which will be very helpful for like uh, people like developers to save a huge amount of time like they, they they will not need to repeat their uh like steps again and again uh for, for the same thing so look at this once i just passed the object name uh my bad string mm -hmm. and then we have age of like type number so just look at this asd so this is what i used for the very current version of the uh, TSSC editor for this. I'm using uh, ES Prima, which is uh, here, loaded here, ES Prima, you can see the name. You, even you can use other uh, like EST parsers for this uh, ES7 uh, or 6 version, but I'm using the ES Prima version. So what it does, it takes the input like this, and then it generates the uh, AST like this. And once you have the AST, you just write that part, uh, like transformer, and you just output that. So uh, let me go over quickly to the TSSG. So TSSG is nothing but a set of processors. So inside the parser, we'll have the SSG parser. So just look at this. Uh, I can. I hope you can see my screen. It's very like, so I'll just, uh, yeah. I'm so oh. sorry, Malik. The, the timing is going so. Yeah, I'm just I'm just finishing up. Like it's my like uh, last slide, so I'm fin finishing up. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So look at this. I have written some processors, which deal with a very specific set of nodes, like a unary expression, an object expression, an array expression, uh, and then we have some validations inside, uh, and then we have a call expression, and this is the main reducer, which uh, recursively calls itself inside these processors and it generates the nested output out of the box and we don't need to repeat ourselves so uh, but uh, the problem is uh, now uh, for this kind of syntax computer flow okay so for this kind of syntax this AST parser, ES Prima, or other JavaScript parser doesn't support this kind of syntax. So we do not have a meaningful AST uh, like for this kind of structure. So that's why I'm working on very uh, own version of this kind of syntax so that we have a very uh, specific version of AST which only deals with this structure, this kind of syntax. So we have the meaningful data and once we have that, we can just do whatever we want. So, uh, 
on the other hand, let just uh, I describe the transfer and then uh, what is peg? Uh, let me explain a bit. Peg is just a syntax, uh, like a set of rules, which allows you to like uh, write the rules for your syntax. Like you want a blog, and then that blog can only have the post, and that allows you to have other uh, constructs, language constructs. So uh, this is pretty much it. And for the transformer, which is uh, I, I explained is a simple reducer, which re recursively calls itself and it makes use of some node processes and then just uh, generate the uh, desired uh, output of that uh, ASP parser. So uh, this is pretty much it for this project. So I really uh, hope uh, you, uh, you will try this uh, TSSC editor uh, whenever like, you are dealing with your uh, Swagger files. And if, it, if you think that it is going to help you in the long run, and if you think that this is something that can change the way you work and, uh, with, and deal with the Swagger and all this stuff, just uh, help me so that I could make this uh, syntax more better, more compact, more easy to uh, adopt for everyone. Uh, and uh, there are so many things going on right now because we're working on the CLI part and I don't have enough time. Otherwise, uh, I could have like gone through the this, uh, command line, which will allow you to have this kind of uh, way. So you just, it will ask you so many questions. I was quickly uh, get user. So it will ask you some other question, like if it is going to be a post or a get method, I will say it's a post. And then you just add the tag and you just add get user by id and skip it yes i want to add the response so it will ask me like what kind of response do you want to add and you say it's 200 and you just write the description let's say it's return a user and then you just enter it and it will open the editor of your choice so once you have that you are able to enter the tssg syntax inside it so let's say you want to return only the name which is string of type string. Okay, so you just exit. Once you exit it, it receives your data. And if you want to add more responses like the 400 and 404, you can do that. Otherwise, I will I'll skip that for the, like, I don't have time. So, and then it will ask you, uh, do you want to like add a request body? Because uh, if you are going to like accept uh, the ID so that you could return that user. So you'll say yes, and we'll proceed with the same editor. Uh, and then we will add that I need the ID which is required. So that's why I, I put the uh, explanation mark in, in front of the type. So once you have that, it will be generated for you, the get user. Thank I you, Malik. Good. So this is pretty much it. So, uh, if you have any questions, just uh, write down uh, into the board, or maybe if you have any kind of like further questions or uh, you are interested into it, you can just go and you can start that repo and you can also create some issues uh, and or maybe feature requests as well. And you I can also join this community so that uh, we could work on this together. Thank you so much. Bro. Thank you, Malik. Thank you. Thank you, Malik. And just I have the quick note. So Malik is in the Go community channel. Please feel free to come if you are interested. Even Malik, I'm trying to convince him to be as a maintainer for the GOP and create a channel for this project and you can join him. And it's free mentorship. I mean, engineers like Malik, I mean, you have to pay to get to be in the team and to learn from these people. So I definitely encourage you, engage you to be in the Slack and let in community channel, let him know. And I will put the contributor on your TSC editor project. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Man. Yeah, so definitely there'll be follow up. It's just overview for the Malik's project. It started like it went public one week or two weeks ago. So definitely it's one of the things. If you're using Swagger, let's take and use it or not just for learning and guidance and stuff. I definitely encourage you to join Malik. Thank you so much, Malik. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a fun, guys. Yeah. And...